What do you think about Yosha Benjo's uh, talking about consciousness and all of these kinds of concepts? Okay, um, I don't know what consciousness is, but... Uh, <laughs> it's a good opener. <laughs> yeah. And to some extent, a lot of the things that are said about consciousness remind me of the questions people were asking themselves in the 18th century or 17th century when they discovered that, uh, you know, how the eye works and the fact that the image at the back of the eye was upside down, mm -hmm. right? Because you have a lens. And, and so on your retina, the image that forms is an image of the world, but it's upside down. How is it that you see right side up? Mm -hmm. And, you know, with what we know today in science, you know, we realize this question doesn't make any sense <laughs> or, or is kind of ridiculous in some way, right? So I think a lot of what is said about consciousness is of that nature. Now, that said, there is a lot of really smart people that uh, for, for whom I have a lot of respect who are talking about this topic, people like uh, David Chalmers, who is a mm -hmm. colleague of mine at NYU. Um, I have kind of a, an orthodox folk uh, speculative hypothesis about consciousness. So we're talking about this idea of world model. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, you know, our entire prefrontal cortex basically is uh, the engine for our world model. Uh, but when we are attending at a particular situation, we're focused on that situation, we basically cannot attend to anything else. And that seems to suggest that we basically have only one world model engine in our prefrontal cortex. Uh, that engine is configurable to the situation at hand. So we are building a box out of wood or we are you know, driving uh, down the highway playing chess. We, we, we basically have uh, a single model of the world that we're configuring to the situation at mm -hmm. hand, which is why we can only attend to one task at a time. Now, if there is a task that we do repeatedly, um, it, it goes from the sort of deliberate reasoning using model of the world and prediction and perhaps something like model predictive control, which I was talking about earlier, to something that is more subconscious that mm -hmm. becomes automatic. So I don't know if you've ever played against a chess grandmaster, uh, you know, I get wiped out in, you know, 10, 10 plies, right? Um, and, you know, I have to think about my move for, you know, like 15 minutes. Uh, and the person in front of me, the grandmaster, you know, would just like react within seconds, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he doesn't need to think about it. That's become part of the subconscious because, you know, it's basically just pattern recognition at this point. Um, same, you know, you... The first few hours you drive a car, you are really attentive, you can't do anything else. And then after 20, 30 hours of practice, 50 hours, you know, it's subconscious, you can talk to the person next to you, you know, things like that, right? Mm -hmm. Unless the situation becomes unpredictable and then you have to stop talking. Um, so that suggests you only have one model in your head. And it might suggest the idea that consciousness basically is the module that configures this world model of yours. You know, you need to have some sort of uh, executive kind of overseer that configures your world model for the situation at hand. And that that leads to kind of the really curious concept that uh, consciousness is not a consequence of the power of our mind, but of the limitation of our brains. That because we have only one world model, we have to be conscious. If we had as many world models as there are as situations we encounter, then we could do all of them simultaneously and we wouldn't need this sort of executive control that we call consciousness. Yeah, interesting. And somehow maybe that executive controller, I mean, the, the hard problem of consciousness, there's some kind of chemicals in biology that's creating a feeling, like it feels to experience some of these things. That, that's kind of like the hard question is, what the heck is that and why is that useful? Maybe the more pragmatic question, why is it useful to feel like this is really you experiencing this versus just like information being processed. Um, it, it could be just a very nice side effect of um, of the way we evolved. That's just very um, useful to to uh, f feel a sense of uh, ownership to the decisions you make, to the perceptions you make, to the model you're trying to maintain. Like you own this thing, and it's the only one you got. And if you lose it, it's going to really suck. And so you should really send the, the brain some signals about it.